Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 8.0, and today is day five. I know yesterday I talked to you about today's challenge would be around importing from a CSV file, and yet before we do that, I wanna to talk to you about custom fields inside of contacts. So what's a custom field? A custom field is a data point that you want to track that may not already be available inside of the contact record. So obviously we know when we went to create a contact back on, what was that, day three, we had name and email and phone number and address and tags and lead source and a place of employment, birthday, anniversary, all of those were fields that already existed. However, in your business, there may be something you want to track about all or a segment of your database where there's no actual data point there. Well, that's where a custom field would come into play. An example might be uh, children's names. Maybe it's important for you to know if any of the contacts in your database have children and if so, what their names are so that you could potentially reference those names in the future. Uh, perhaps you do a lot of military-based business and you want to know what branch of the military your contacts are in. Uh, if it's a buyer contact, perhaps a custom field would include if they're financing their purchase, what type of financing they intend to use. So would it be jumbo, FHA, VA, etc. So custom fields are created from within our settings menu. It's the main location you can do that, a couple other places, but we're gonna do it today through our settings menu. So we're gonna click on the drop down just to the right of the name. We're gonna click on settings and that's gonna bring us into our settings menu here. You remember this settings menu from day one. We're gonna come over to command settings and click on this drop down, And then we're gonna choose the contacts sub menu and come down just a little bit further into the last section here, which is custom fields. When we do that, you can see that we have a list of all the previously created custom fields, if we've done any before, and then the ability to create a new one. So I'm going to click on create custom field. Inside this custom field, I'm going to call this children's names. And then it asks me what type of field type that would be. So you can see we've got a variety of selections. It could be a text field or area. It could be a drop down. It could be a date checkbox number you can see as we continue to go in a url a percentage even a currency type since this is most likely just going to be a text field i'm going to choose that and you know i'm probably going to ask that question pretty often so when i fill in a contact i'd like that custom field just to be available so we're going to check yes to make that a default custom field and we're going to go ahead and create it let's go ahead and do one more custom field so this might be a military branch if we're working with a lot of military and in this case let's do a drop down so when you do a drop down you can see it's going to give you options so i might come in here and put army and then i might put navy and we would do air force and I know there's a whole bunch of other ones. Now the Marines might tell you all we need is the Marines, but you know how that goes, right? Uh, Coast Guard, you know, you can go through and add in all of the main field types that you want. Um, and this is probably not a question I would ask of every single person in my database, not all of them are in the military. So we don't need to make this a custom field. Uh, if you are heavily involved in military, maybe it would be a custom field, but I'm gonna go ahead and create this as a custom field. We're just not gonna make it a default. So what does this look like now when we go to create a contact? Well, the first thing, let's go back to our contacts applet and we're going to add a contact and we're gonna find that custom information underneath our add more information button and then the custom dropdown. So you can see when we scroll down, well, children's name is already a default. So it shows up automatically. I don't have to choose it from my list of custom fields. However, you can see military branch because it was not one of our defaults. I would have to come in and say add custom field. And then you would see the drop down. I click on this drop down and here are the custom fields I have available. So I could choose military branch because we created this custom field as a drop down. We now get a drop down menu and we would come in and choose which one of those drop downs we wanted to see. Now, once we've added a contact and we have those specific custom fields available to us, well, how do we actually then see them on the screen? You can see we don't see children's names or military branch. 
we need to click on the customize columns option here. This is going to give us a list of all available columns, including some additional information from the contact record that we may have filled in, we're just not seeing on the screen. Finally, if we come down to the bottom, we're going to get those two custom fields that we just created, and we could click on children's names and military branch. You're going to see on the right hand side, this is your column order from left to right. And so we would want to come in and say, hey, let's make maybe children's name needs to be right up there with tags and military branch also important. We'll put that right after children's name. We could click on apply and now you're going to see those columns. Now there's nothing in there because we didn't fill it out for these two contacts, but this is where you could see that information. This is going to be important tomorrow when we do talk about that CSV import. We can actually import data from a column of data that we don't necessarily have right now in command by creating a custom field in advance of that import. So stay tuned for that tomorrow. As always, look forward to talking to you again real soon.